My name is Sam. Well, I wanted to do this film. It was, uh, Patrick and I, P Patrick Riley, the director, and, and I, and the producer, um, worked on one of Ken Henderson's films last year, one of his scripts, uh, and made a, made a really good movie about 71, and we wanted to work together again, and the fact that it was on another one of Ken's scripts was, was, was very appealing to me, to both of us. And so I read the script, which I don't always do with every script. <laughs> that Patrick sent me. <laughs> Josh Marquezel, I'll be playing Max. Patrick, uh, when Patrick contacted me about the script, it was early on before before the script was the script that it is today. And he, he had uh, told me that he and Ken were discussing a, a story and that they had me in mind and that they were going to develop it from that point on uh, with me in mind if I would uh, if I would agree to block off this time in, in June. Southwest Louisiana, the hottest time on earth. Hit me with your demonic look. There you go. Okay, my name is Gary Shannon, and I play Harley, the bad guy in the movie. And uh, Harley is. A big fish in a little pond. He's his own personal mafia. He's got people that work for him, you know, and do his bidding and stuff like that. But he's he's a real mean guy. Always, you know, just inches from snapping. Uh, very violent. Very angry all the time. And, you know, you get to uh, experience a wide range of emotion. My name is Hillary Bronwyn Gale. I play Princess. Okay, I'm Charles McNeely. And I'm playing the character of Rust. My name is Chris Bello, and uh, I play uh, the bartender, Lucky. My name is Carol Ann Gale. I have two functions on this film, good boy. My first function is the uh, production designer, which means that locations, casting props, costumes, uh, I hate to think of all that I'm doing. Why they call him Lucky, I have no idea. He seems like the most unlucky bartender. What intrigued me was uh, playing a homeless person, such an eccentric homeless person, who ate dog food and drank beer. I feel like Princess is someone who had maybe a troubled past and got into a bad situation with this guy, Harley. And But she's smart and observant and is aware of what's going on around her and what kind of person Harley is doesn't approve but knows that there's a certain time to take action and when that time arises she does just that. Uh, this is my second time to work with Patrick Roddy and of course it's always it's always great working with Patrick. I uh, I got to work with Patrick on uh, Mercy back in 05. And he did good things, you know, got some good press and, and things like that. So he called me to work on Red 71, couldn't do that, and uh, he was nice enough to call me and offer me the part of Harley in this movie. My second function is I play the role of Lucy. Lucy's daughter apparently has been missing, for which the audience doesn't know how long, but it's been quite some time, because my life consists, uh, as Lucy, of putting up missing notices up and down highways to the point where I'm just sort of in this la-la delirious land and um, I, I love picking up roadkill because apparently I make a mighty fine stewed chicken with gravy. It's, uh, well, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's not something I'm used to, but I am enjoying it. And it's always great working with Pat. Always has been. He has become part of my life because I seem to be his go-to bad guy or something like that. Which, and I really enjoy it. He's, he's a, an actor's director who can really get things out of you that maybe you didn't know you could. Yes. Is that magazine from the wreck? Oh, good lord. And a good afternoon to you, sir. I thought I told you not to hang out back here. Just passing through. Next to him, making it run that way. In fact, he's opposite. He has to run toward the camera. That's right. Yes, but I want that shot, and I want the key to go this way. 
But that's not fuel. No, it's, it's going to work twice. Work. We can try it. I mean, you know, we can try it. One, yeah. one, she can take the hose and get it as close as possible to force it. She doesn't have to actually do it from the distance. Right. Because who knows how long he's been peeing. Second of all, uh, Carl's shot was right here. So if we cut here, and if you, the, even when we're here, it's going to work. Yeah, this is the shot. It, it can, okay. But, uh, let's see if we can get the pee to go up. Uh, it would be great if the pee went, if the pee went, if the pee went, if the pee went this way, it would be great. Yeah. And he, if the pee goes here, it would be You good? I've been peeing in this all uh, one, one also very special thing about the shoot is that we have Craig Houston with us as uh, an, an advisor on the shoot. Uh, Craig Houston, I'm not playing any. And, and he has worked on major films going back um, to the 70s, I guess, early 70s. Um, <clears throat> Iger Sanction, First Blood, uh, Uncommon Valor, um, Heaven Can Wait, and the uh, story that I want to mention about Heaven Can Wait, which was a Warren Beatty film from mid-late 70s, something like that, is that my grandmother worked on that film in the art department. She was a sculptress and she made, among other things, she made the wishing well that Warren Beatty's character falls into, and, uh, and, that, and that starts the, the story. Actually, I don't know if he falls into it. I think he gets pushed into it. But um, So I mentioned that to Craig, and Craig said that he stood in for Warren Beatty on that particular scene, and he's the guy that fell into the well that my grandmother made. So that was a, a really cool coincidence. Well, this is my third film with Patrick um, as a director, and um, he is wonderful to work with. Um, he's very open. He's very gracious. He pretty much turns me loose, which is, is something that I really appreciate. You know, um, you know he can turn me loose. And uh, if I'm not giving you what you what you're looking for, you know, you can tell me to tone it down or give you more. And, and that's one thing I really, really like as an actor. What I like about Patrick as a director is um, the freedom that he gives me. He's just a remarkable filmmaker. I think he he knows what he wants. He's got a great vision, and I think he surrounds himself with a wonderful supporting cast. Not only actors, but the technical crew and producers and, and, and everyone. Everyone on the crew is just so talented and they're so happy to be here. And I think that's really important on the production. Patrick is so patient and creative and allows the actor to, to play. Um, it's an, he's an actor's dream. Patrick's, a, Patrick's, Patrick's an interesting fellow. I don't, I don't know that I would, uh, I would work on another film necessarily. Except that, uh, except that for Patrick. Um, I think at one point I, I probably had aspirations to, uh, to try to break into the industry, but uh, I think I just enjoy working for him. I don't, I don't know that I'd, I'd want to do this for anyone else. Ken Henderson, and I'm the uh, writer of Good Boy. We had some uh, we had some struggles, or at least I did, uh, with the role of women in the film because uh, women are presented early on as victims. Uh, our hero becomes a victim also. So we, I, I particularly had some struggles with uh, 
with their role, uh, an effective role, in, in, uh, without making them seem like just, just purely as objects. And um, <clears throat> some of the development notes we got back, not just from Patrick, but, uh, uh, but from, from members of the cast, helped us to uh, kind of firm up that, uh, you know, that, uh, that problem that I had. And, uh, and we did make some, make some pretty good changes in uh, about the third draft, uh, which really solidified uh, how women were going to influence this film. Uh, you know, a great deal of the horror, uh, the, uh, the terror that, that we as the audience feels in this film is, uh, is because of how, how people are being brutalized. <coughs> we're able to find a balance where we we're able to show that uh, the women weren't, weren't just helpless victims. So. I like the script. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really good story. Um, it's got this uh, kind of mixed up protagonist, call them the protagonist, but the central figure of our movie is this guy who uh, uh, does not win over the audience's love in the early part of the movie, maybe a little bit of sympathy and that sort of thing, and he goes off and finds himself neck deep in, in uh, a whole lot of trouble that he didn't anticipate as he was going off to find a brand new start in life. When I got the script, uh, Patrick asked me to either um, look at Rusty or one other character, I forget who it was, but uh, once I read the script and once I finished with the scene that Rusty was in, I said, oh yeah. My name is Molly Marquardt. I live up in Derrida. I am visiting the Lake Charles film industry for the very first time. I enjoyed getting bloody every day and a lot of the blood, we had a lot of different brands that were store-bought and then some of it, some of the girls have made themselves. The most enjoyable time has been working with the roadkill scenes. I loved helping put together that box. I made the blood, got the good consistency. You know, licking your fingers when you're making blood is an experience. It's been a really fun crew. Everybody's been really nice, and everybody's kind of pitching in to help each other, and that's really cool, because that's kind of the key. Well, I'm uh, Scott Walter. I've been very busy uh, helping on set, so this was the only time I could find a to do this interview, I hope you don't mind. Basically, we've got a uh, we've got a film with a very strong dog motif and no actual dogs in it, which is uh, which is a nice change. I got a bum hand, and well, now I'm taking a dump, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, stuff happens. The camaraderie on set's great. But we knew we were going to use Josh Marcantel. The same with Gary Shannon. Uh, you know, Gary Shannon was in uh, Patrick Roddy's film Mercy. Uh, I really found myself like in a rage. Yeah, yeah. That's where you're supposed to be. There was, uh, you know, they put a sandbag and, and her chain underneath the sandbag. So when I stomped down the sandbag, her back, it gave it some some tension on the other side. And as I was, I was getting frustrated that I couldn't yeah. pull that chain out from under there. And it was, it, it just, I, everybody around me just disappeared. Yeah, sure, that's great. You set the mat, you know, you set the wounds and the, and the blood and everything, and then you don't think about the cleanup afterwards. I'm telling you, that's really something. Um, but now we're getting ready to shoot Gary, uh, Gary's death scene, and then we're going to the one in the yard. Yep, yeah, and then we're going to do uh, the bathroom insert, which is an interesting thing. It's this box that we're building, and we're going to fill it with. Um, Decayed um, uh, liquid people. Liquid people. Yeah. One of the things that amazed me most is how incredibly hard a movie crew works. All the guys, the cameras and the lights and the, the booms and stuff like that. Um, they work their butts off while we're shooting. The cast. Is no, the cast has been horrible. I mean, they're they're so needy. Like Max, Max Bernard, the guy. Uh, uh, what's his name? Josh Marktel. He keeps talking about Scott's mom. And then somebody else cut, and they're setting up for the next shot, and everybody else goes and sits in an air-conditioned room. And like he's oh, he's like always asking for coffee. He wants like 50 million white T-shirts. You know, he has to have someone like you know uh, comb his beard and the hot wraps around his neck. You know. And the uh, the crew guys just keep you know working away, and they take about two breaks a day for about you know 10 seconds a piece, and they just they work so hard, and it's just an amazing group of people. Uh, and then like you know Princess Gary, 
you know, we're constantly having to buy Gary, like, cigarettes up the wazoo because he needs his, you know, five packs a day, you know, and, and Princess constantly just needs her hair done. Were we in a knife fight or something? Uh, did I betray him? Did, what? I have no clue. All I know is when I'm behind that bar, he scares the living hell out of me. Because I don't want to be yelled at. You know, John Prince is constantly just, you know, wanting to do stunts and jump around. And, and he always wants his, like, 32 ounces of Slurpee, you know, cherry red flavor. It's killing me. The only one who's cool is Tommy Cole. Tommy Cole's awesome. That guy, Tommy Cole, can dig a 12-inch hole. No, a 12-inch hole. You're back for the last half of the last day. locations right here in this area and I've, I've lived here for several years but we, we used a lot of places I've never been before and I was able to see it say the example around Dry Creek where a lot of the cabin uh, scenes were shot it's just absolutely beautiful beautiful country up there and one of my favorite things as you can see is uh, driving my Jeep and I like to go way out in the country and just find back roads and I'm looking forward to when this thing is actually wrapped going back up to the Dry Creek area and exploring some of those back roads. I'm born and raised in Louisiana, in Lake Charles. People in this region seem to have, you know, we're passionate about being hospitable to other people. And the people in the area too were so gracious to everybody. We open our arms and our homes. Scott Waldrop's been awesome. Jorge's been awesome. Uh, of course, Patrick's awesome. They flew me out here because I needed more help, and I'm glad I came out. And I've been the all-around, just gripping, doing, running location sound, doing other stuff, trying to get this picture made. This is my first time working with a movie. I'm 40 years in the theater. I don't know if you can see there's George. Right there. I take a 10-gauge shotgun blast to the crotch, and. <laughs> You know, and you're standing there, and you, and you got your pants around your knees, and, and three ladies are running tubes up your, your legs and into your, your skivvies so that it looks like, you know, blood's just pouring out, and you, you can't be real shy. I mean, you know, and you, you're looking down, and, and they, they've got this gaffer's tape around your leg and these tubes. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this, I was nervous about that shot because, you know, getting shot shots require a lot of reaction and stuff like that. But it was so hot in that cabin when they finally said action and they, they pumped the pumps and that, that blood came pouring out. I did not know it was going to be that cold. And it was so refreshing. It was just wonderful. So I, naturally we blew a couple of takes so I could cool off and they kept having to rewire me. But it was a great way to cool down even though I did ruin a good pair of Levi's. Oh. The advantages that I had with this script as opposed to some other scripts I've written is I knew a little bit about the cast that we were going to use before we actually wrote the, wrote the script. I, I do like Gary's, uh, Gary's character Harley quite a bit. I think, uh, I think he's uh, a little more complex 
uh, than a lot of villains. So uh, his uh, his motivations will be uh, will be fun. Last year, we shot Red 71 in Tucson, Arizona in June. Um, June is the Bill. hottest month of the year in Tucson, Arizona. I can't think of a worse time to shoot a film than in the hottest month of the year. So this year we made, uh, we made the wonderful decision to shoot uh, Good Boy in June in Louisiana, one of the hottest months of the year. So we're all, uh, uh, we're all, we're all really uh, suffering from the heat. Here's the thing, see. Here's the thing with Patrick. He likes to set movies in the winter, but he likes to shoot them in southwest Louisiana in the summer. So you end up, and you know how hot it is here, you end up with a bunch of people wearing coats and scarves and raincoats and boots, and it's 110 degrees in the shade, and every other, every other take you go, mop! And uh, it's a little crazy, but you know it's funny when you when you, then later when you watch the finished movie, you forget that it was 110 degrees, and, and you're watching people walk around. And he goes, "Oh, it's a, you know it's set in the winter." And um, just once, I would like to see Patrick come down here and shoot something in October or November, so we can all be comfortable. But I know good and well he would wait till it's you know we're in the middle of another ice storm, and uh, we'd all be running around and cut off some t-shirts. So thank you, Patrick. It's nice to know our comfort is first with you. Well, I'm going down the wrong side of the road And I can't see any other way, hey And if you ask me why, I'll tell you, I don't know But there is one thing that I would like to say, hey Fuck the law, fuck the law, fuck the law Fuck the law, fuck the law, fuck the law And if you see me going down this highway to hell I don't ask me where I'm going, cause I won't even tell And if you're thinking about coming with me, hey, might as well Brother, this is where we're going, you can't be afraid to yell Fuck the law Wow.